to the viewers, uh, welcome to Biology Assets. Today, we'll be looking at central dogma of molecular biology. The central dogma of molecular biology. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe and click on the notification button so that you will be notified anytime we post new videos. Back to the topic before us, central dogma of molecular biology. Now, the central dogma of molecular biology can be simply described as the synthesis of RNA using DNA and the synthesis of protein from DNA. We can, say we can, we can simply say from DNA to RNA, from RNA to protein. So that's the summary of the central dogma of molecular biology. How we synthesize RNA using DNA as the template and how we synthesize protein using RNA as the template. Now, the, the central dogma of molecular biology involves two processes. The first process is transcription and the second process is translation. What is transcription? Transcription involves the synthesis of RNA using DNA as templates. And translation involves the synthesis of protein using RNA as the template. So the two processes, transcription and translation, combined together, makes up the central dogma of molecular biology. Now, we'll be looking at transcription. We're we'll looking at the process, the mechanisms, the process, and the steps involved in transcription. Transcription involves four stages. It involves four stages. We have the initiation, we have the enogation, we have the termination, and the processing. Initiation, enogation, termination, and processing. Don't forget initiation, enogation, termination, and processing. Now, if we have before, before we begin to look at each of these processes, each of these uh, stages, we have the DNA strand there. This, this is a DNA strand. This is 3 prime to 5 prime end, 5 prime to 3 prime end. We have the DNA strand there. Now, if you look at the DNA strand, we have what we call the promoter region. The promoter region. The promoter region is where the process of initiation starts from. Is where the new RNA strand that is about to be produced will be initiated. And we also have the terminating sequence. The terminating sequence is the, is the, is the, is the position where the, the new RNA strand that will be produced will be terminated. So don't forget we have the promoter region and the terminating sequence on the two strands of DNA. On the two strands of DNA. Now, in the process of transcription, the first stage is the first stage is the transcription factor. There's all called transcription factor TF. The transcription factor will bind to the promoter region. The transcription factor binds or attached to the promoter region. As you can see here, this is a transcription factor. The transcription factor will now attach to the promoter region. When the transcription factor attached to the promoter region, it will activate the release of RNA polymerase. Now, RNA polymerase is the enzymes that help to synthesize RNA from DNA. Don't forget when we're looking at DNA replication, the enzyme that helps in the production of new, DN, new DNA strand is DNA polymerase. But in this case, what we are about to produce is RNA. So because it is RNA, the enzyme that will initiate the pro this process is called the RNA polymerase. So when the transcription factor binds to the promoter region, it will initiate the recruitment of RNA polymerase. And when the RNA polymerase comes into the scene, it will unwind or unzip DNA strands. The RNA polymerase will unwind, unzip, separate DNA strand. After, after that, the RNA polymerase will now start the process of synthesis of the new strands of RNA. But it can't start the process on its own. It needs the help of another factor. 
and that factor is known as the sigma factor. This is the sigma factor. So the sigma factor here will help the RNA to start the synthesis of RNA strands. And that is the process of initiation. That is the stages of initiation. So at initiation, we have the sigma factor plus the RNA polymerase. It will start the process of initiation. They will start the process of initiation. So after the process of initiation have started, the new strands that have been initiated will now begin to elongate. This will take us to the process of elongation. So the synthesis of uh, the synthesis of new strand will continue. The synthesis of new strand continue through the aid of another factor known as rho factor. Now we have said that transcription factor. We help in the equipment of poly, um, polymerase, RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase, we unwind the two DNA strands. After that, the sigma factor will come, in, will come into the scene and helps the RNA polymerase to start the process of initiation. When the process of initiation started, the new strands will, be, will, now con it will continue, leading to the process of enlogation. But there's another factor that will come into place. And this factor is known as the rho factor. So the rho factor we help in the process of elongation. The sigma factor helps in the process of uh, helps in the process of uh, helps, the sigma factor helps in the process of initiation. The rho factor we helps in the process of elongation. So once the rho factor is involved, this strand will begin to elongate. It will begin to elongate more strands will be added to be added until it gets to the terminating sequence. When it gets to the terminating sequence, the rho factor will also help in the process of termination. So the rho factor performs two rows, elongation and termination. The rho factor performs two rows, elongation and termination. The sigma factor is only required at the initiation stage, while the transcription factor helps in the recruitment of RNA polymerase. Another thing to note in the process of transcription is that RNA polymerase, we add new strand from a 5 prime end to a 3 prime end. If you can remember from DNA replication, DNA polymerase adds new strand from a 5 prime end to a 3 prime end. The same thing is applicable when we look at RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase, we had new strands of RNA from a 5 prime end to a 3 prime end. Now, one of the basic characteristics of DNA is antiparallelism. And the, the two strands are antiparallel. If one strand is 3 prime to 5 prime, the other strand must be 5 prime to 3 prime. Now, you, with that understanding, with that understanding, the new RNA strand that is about to be produced will be 5 prime to 3 prime. It will be 5 prime to 3 prime. So that means that the template for the production of the new strands of RNA will be the opposite of the RNA. So it means that the template strands for the production of RNA will be 3 prime to 5 prime because the new strand of RNA is 5 prime to 3 prime. So the DNA strand that is 5 prime to 3 prime is the template strand is the template strand or antisense strand why this 5 prime to 3 prime is the coding strand or the sense strand or the sense strand so we can see that the new strand is 5 prime to 3 prime because it is 5 prime to 3 prime the template strand will be 3 prime to 5 prime, while the coding strand is 5 prime to 3 prime. It's 5 prime to 3 prime. Now, after the production of the mRNA strand, after the synthesis of the mRNA strand, the mRNA that have been synthesized is not fully matured. It's not fully matured. And we don't call it mRNA. mRNA means messenger RNA. We don't call it mRNA, we call it pre-mRNA. 
pre-mRNA. Pre-mRNA. So because it is pre-mRNA, it will have to undergo one more further step, and that will lead us to processing. We have looked at initiation, we have looked at elongation, we have looked at termination, and the final stage is processing. So it in the process of it is this, in the it in the stage of processing that is where the pre-mRNA will be matured, will be we 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 undergo some other some other kind of um, processes. It is in the process of it is in the in the stage of processing that is when the mRNA strands we undergo further maturation, further maturation. Now, what will happen in the process in in the stage of processing? The stage of processing is divided into two. We have splicing. And we have capping, splicing and capping, splicing and capping are two subdivisions of the stage of processing. Now, what is splicing? Splicing is a process where a certain enzyme called a certain enzyme called the spliceozo. A certain enzyme called the spliceosome will remove the intron and add the exon together. Now, let me explain this. In the pre mRNA, we have two portions, or we have two parts. We have the exon and the intron. The exon is the coding sequence of the, MR, of the mRNA, while the intron is the non coding sequence of the mRNA. However, the introns need to be removed because it, it is a non-coding sequence. It has to be removed. So the enzyme that will remove it is known as the spliceosome. And this will happen in the process of splicing. Don't forget, splicing is under the stage of processing. After the removal of the intron, the exon will be hacked together. When the exons are hacked together, then it will not, when the exons are hacked to, are together, the mRNA will now undergo the final step known as the capping. Known as the capping. The capping means at the 5 prime end, 5 poly A tail will be added to it. 5 poly A tails, 5 poly A tails will be added to this 5 prime end, and 3 prime tails will be added to this 3 prime end. Why the capping? The reason for the capping is to protect the, the, the RNA. Is to protect the newly formed RNA from various uh, from various exons from various exons that may that, that may intend to damage it. So the RNA needs to be capped, and the capping involves two things: at the five prime end, five poly A tails will be added; at the three prime end, three prime tails will be added. So when these things are fully added, then we can have a full mRNA. We no longer call it pre-mRNA again. We can now call it mRNA. It is this mRNA that will now be, that will, that will now undergo the process of translation that can now be synthesized into protein. That can now be synthesized into protein. The, all the process that we have described so far, the process of transcription takes place inside the nucleus. It takes place inside the nucleus. It is when the RNA has been finally produced that the RNA will now move out of the nucleus and enter into the cytoplasm. When it enters into the cytoplasm, it is now ready to be transcribed into protein. It is now ready to be transcribed into protein. So let's quickly do a recap of the process of transcription. And a quickly recap of the process of transcription. We have four stages. We have initiation, elongation, termination, and processing. Initiation, elongation, termination, and processing. And uh, what happened at initiation? What happened at initiation that the transcription factor will bind to the promoter region? That's one. The RNA polymerase will unzip the DNA strand. Two, three, the sigma factor will help the RNA polymerase to start the process of initiation. And the rho factor will help the RNA polymerase 
to continue the process, to continue the synthesis of, a, of, of the new RNA strand. And it also helps in the termination of the new RNA strand. And don't forget that RNA polymerase, we add new strands from a 5 prime end to a 3 prime end. Because of these, 3 prime and 5 prime DNA will serve as the template strand. While the 5 prime and 3 prime end will serve as the coding, as the coding strand. After that, the newly produced mRNA is known as pre-mRNA. This premier RNA will now undergo another stage known as processing. And processing is divided into two. We have the splicing and the capping. The splicing and the capping. What happens in splicing? In splicing is where the introns are removed and the exons are held together. And what helps in the removal of the intron is the spliceosome. The spliceosome removes the intron and adds the exons together. After that, we have capping. We have capping. And what happens in capping? Three prime tails will be added to the three prime region, and the five polyate tails will be added to the five prime region. That is a summary of the process of transcription. That is the first part of the central dogma of molecular biology. If you have any questions, you can drop it at the comment section. Thanks for listening.